I asked God, I said, God, I get tired of ministering the word through tears. I need to just minister your word and sit down. But she gave me this vial, and it has a mustard seed in it. And I had shared on Wednesday. I said, I felt that when God elevated me, my faith went back down to a mustard seed of faith level. And I shared some things with my husband. I was like, in this elevation, I, I, I'm like, I kind of wanted to, I was kind of pouting. So that's what y'all got at Wednesday, me pouting. I was a little pouting because I'm like, I want to go back to that level when I was sure. I was confident, God. I knew what you was going to do. But God said, no, you got more into you, more in you. I need to pull you on up a little higher because the word of God said we, build, we go from faith to faith and glory to glory. And I was at a place where I didn't want to accept that. But now I am at a place where I can receive what God says. Amen. Let's pray. God, we thank you for being the awesome God that you are. Lord, I thank you for everything that you have done for me. I pray that I just decrease. God, that you will increase and get the glory on this day, God. Lord, I bless your name. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your comfort. I thank you for Holy Spirit that is moving in this place right now, God. Just use me, I pray out, God so that you get the glory in everything, in every word, in every scripture. In Jesus' name I pray and give you thanks. Amen. Well, first of all, I want to say before I wouldn't dare let this month go out, it is Pastor's Appreciation Month. And I just want to thank God for my pastor, my covering. Yeah, I get, he get to be my friend, my coffee partner. He is my children's father, because he is not no baby daddy. He is my children's father. He is, he's my everything. He's my person. And I just thank God for him. And I want to let you know, baby, I appreciate you. I appreciate you being my pastor and being the pastor and being obedient to God. I know I give you a hard time about that. But being obedient to, that's the inside joke. But being obedient to God and what God has called you to do in this day. Amen. Y'all today, God dealt with me about faith. Now, like I said, the level where I was, I was like, I had went on a journey with faith. I, God, I had, you gonna hear them? Yeah, you gonna hear them. I already know God. You, you gonna, mm -hmm, God, the level where I was. But when God elevated me, I started to have a little doubt, not in God, but in the confidence of me and what God can do through me. Amen. So I went on this journey, this one, I'm going to tell y'all, like I shared with the women, a Wednesday I came in here, we had, uh, we were talking about our manifestation. I said, hey, I got nothing. I said, I just want y'all to know I love y'all, but I got nothing. And they started, it's like God, they just started encouraging me and encouraging my spirit and started sharing. And I just sat there and listened and took it in. And one sister Robin said, and I had to go home and tell pastor, she said, we received what you said Sunday. And I looked at her house and God quickened my spirit. He said, so you, you want to let me down and them down? And I'm looking like, Lord, oh, okay, Lord, okay. I'm like, I, I, told my, I tell my husband a heartbeat. Some of the things that um, I talk about are out of conviction of what I, I literally had to read. Uh, I read passages of scriptures to him. I read one morning in our uh, meditation time and I cried through the whole scripture because I was so convicted because God was telling me to do some things and I was just holding on to some things where he were pruning and telling me to let go. And I wanted to like rearrange it where it can still fit in and still do what God say, but you know, not let him prune it or cut it off, but I wanted to fit it in. But God was like, no, you're either going to be obedient or you're not. And I was like, okay, God, I had, and I cried through that thing. He just sat there and listened to me, but I cried through it and I overcame it. Amen. Amen. And I'm continually to overcome. So let's talk about faith. Faith in Webster Dictionary, faith is a firm belief in something for which there is no proof. Complete trust. Now that's man's dictionary. Now let's go to the word. I got it written down, y'all, but I, I promise you it come from the word. 
It said the Bible says in Hebrew 11 and 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And God had me to look up that now. Now is a movement. It's a moment. It's something that happens in the moment. So that faith in what you believe it, it happens immediately. God said now, now faith. It's quick. It's quick. So God reminded me, Latanya, because I'm believing God for some things, for my family, for myself, for, this, for our church, for some of you. I believe every student that is off in college will walk across that stage with a degree, including mine. Because God had to remind me that just because your 25-year-old is doing her thing, she still got a firm foundation in me. Rem and he reminded me, he said, remember, Latanya, you deterred off of my purpose because y'all I graduated from college I had a whole husband a four-year-old so God, I'm like I'm like God I don't want her to go that way but anyway other than that way but God said you don't know my, you don't know the plan and purpose I have so I know that my baby is going to walk across the stage both of them and receive their degree so I'm what I said for mine y'all I speak for y'all be I'm confident to speak for y'all amen Amen. So he reminded me, you have to believe what you can't see. Y'all, I can't see myself up here ministering the word. Like Vicky said, that's just, y'all, my husband used to take out running through that church. I used to, and it was so funny when I first shared it with Vicky and he did it the next Sunday. I'm like, oh my God. I, I'm like, I look, and Vicky got so tickled because she knew how I felt. I'm like, he is at it again. I'm like, Lord, you couldn't be this good. I mean, he couldn't be responding like this. But oh, when God got a hold of me, I understood why he was responding the way he was. Amen. So we have to continue to build our faith. That's what I learned. When I reached that level that I was just convinced and walking and knowing what God was, God was like, okay, you done topped out. Let me take you higher. Let me take you higher. So sometimes elevation means that you start back on level one. Okay? So God said, you got to continue to build this thing. How? I said, well, okay, God, how I do that? So you know me. I, I got past that. I don't know y'all know. My mom is Nora Good, Nora Janetta Good. She's like a Bible roller dicks. I mean, even before Google was invented, you can call and say, Mama, I'm looking for this scripture that say A, B, and C. Oh, baby, that's okay. And so that's a Bible. I'm like, Lord, if I can recall your word, just a third of what she can do. I think I'll be all right. Y'all know, y'all, I just, I know I'll be all right. And I get to live in the house with a, a walking dictionary. Because <laughs> y'all, I'm, I'm going to be honest, a transparent moment in our house. My husband talks about the word all the time. I had to go, hey, hey, wait, wait, wait. I just want to watch this TV show. Can you give me that revelation after my show? Go and they, y'all, he wait till the last five minutes on my show and want to come tell me about a revelation. I'd be like, Derek, I got five more minutes. Tell me after this. But baby, they got pause. I'm like, but I don't want to pause. I want to hear what the hell, you know. So, but I thank God for him because he's always prepared when I got a question. <laughs> so how do we build our faith? We got to know God exists. We got to, we got to have a relationship with God. We got to study God's word, and we got to pray. We have to pray. My God, it, it's impossible if we don't. It, we just, you just out there. You, you, you just, you can't, you can't miss it. And I prayed that. My husband told me, he said, baby, take it slow. So that, he said, you got something that everybody needs. He said, take it slow. And I said, okay. How do we know God exists through our salvation? Let's go to the word. Romans 8, I'm sorry, Romans 10, 8 through 10 says, but what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word, word of faith which, it, which we preach. That if, we, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So that tells me the moment I spoke it, I was already saved. I was a cha my life changed. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession 
is made unto salvation. So we had to get our heart in the right posture, and we had to speak that thing. Amen? Amen. I'm not going to be before you long, because this, this is not a long message. It was just a teaching that God gave me. Next, we have to build our relationship with God. We got to trust God. We got, I have to say, I, read, I was reading one of my meditation uh, one morning. I read um, a meditation with, uh, Joyce, from Joyce Myers. And she said, sometimes I have to say it a thousand times a day. I trust God. I trust God. And, you know, that caught my attention because, you know, when you feel that you doubting something or you at a place that you don't trust God, I feel convicted because I'm like, okay, Lord. You know, but then God reminds you, even the lady said, Lord, I believe, but Lord, help my unbelief. So God gives us a place where he know the flesh is going to rise, but he, he can get you right on back over to that spirit. I said, okay, Lord, and y'all, my favorite scripture, Proverbs 3 and 5, it said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Because sometimes you just don't understand. I don't understand why cancer exists. And I don't understand, God, why everybody don't survive. That was my question when I got the message about Stephanie. I'm like, God, she fought. God said she fought a good fight because she got what I needed. She got to her purpose. She li None of us know what the end of our purpose is going to be. But it's for us to be obedient and trust God and stay in line with God about what our purpose is going to be here in this earth. Amen. So... I, got, I told God, I said, okay, okay, God, let me build my trust. I said, how do I do that? God said, think on some things that you know I am. I said, okay. God says, I'm Jehovah. I don't change. I'm changeless. Oh, my God. He said, I'm Jehovah Shema. I'm always there. I called my husband one day at work. The enemy was just attacking my mind. I'm like, I feel forsaken. I feel alone. He said, uh, him being him, okay, baby, let me pull over to close your door. Let me pray. And at that moment, I'm like, I really didn't want to pray. I just wanted to complain. But okay, let me stop and pray. I'm just, I'm transparent. Yeah, I can only be who God has called me to be. Because in flesh, when you're at a point, sometimes you do not want to hear nobody praying. You want to know somebody praying, but you necessarily don't want to hear them praying. So God had to remind me that I'm there. I'm Jehovah Shema. I'm there. I'm present. I'm present even though you speaking out of your flesh, Latanya, saying that out of forsaking you. I'm still there. Say, come on, polar child. Come on, come on. Then he said, I'm Jehovah Jireh. Latonya, while you thinking about how tuition going to get paid for next semester, I've already paid the way. I've provided that way already. I've already made that pay. Yeah, I don't, and I don't know where that come from because I've never been a person that, that was concerned about finances. I've always known however God is going to bless me, it's going to happen. He's going to show up when he needs, when I need it, he's going to show up. But now I got this baby in school, and she's excited, and I want to keep her encouraged. And I started talking to her, and she said, well, Mommy, I think I'm going to go apply for this scholarship and that scholarship. I said, okay, that's great, because I feel you could get it. I said, but why you, what, what make you think of that? Because, Mom, I feel you stressed. I feel that you're stressed at how my tuition, because... That bottom line in our savings was, you know, it was coming on down. And I was like, okay, but God said, I provided that savings then. I did it then. And I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. I'm, I had to remember that he was Jehovah Jireh. He continually provides for me. Amen. Then he said, Latanya, while you're in all this chaos, I'm Jehovah Shalom. Let me give you a little peace. Let me step into your atmosphere and change your atmosphere. My atmosphere in my mind, sometimes your mind, the old people say he a mind regulator. He had to regulate my mind to let me know he's my peace. 
Hallelujah. Then, y'all, I start wondering why I didn't fit in everywhere I went. Every room I walked in, some places I just didn't fit in. Get a little uncomfortable. You know how you would try to make your, you, you a circle trying to make yourself fit in a square? And God said, let me remind you of one thing. I'm Jehovah Mekadesh. I have set you apart. That's why you will never fit in, Latanya. And I'm like, okay, God. Okay. And then he reminded me of something that I fought <laughs> for about three and a half years. Latanya, your Esther anointing is still there, whether you want to receive it, accept it, operate in it or not. Because I give you a gift. I'm not the God that takes it away. So being Jehovah Mekadesh, I had to step over into my anointing and remind my flesh that I am set apart. Because when I walk in a room, I don't have to fit because I'm already set apart. So it's something about me that's going to attract what needs to come to me. I don't have to worry about the sitting at the table because God already done laid the table before me. I just need to walk up to it and pick out what I need and pick up what I want. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Then God said, Latanya, I'm Jehovah Nisi. Oh, God, I am the God of victory. So if I'm the God of victory, I give you victory. So y'all, today I operate in victory because I serve a victorious God. He is, he is my victory. He's my banner. That's what your victory means. He's my banner. He stands for me. Amen. Y'all, then I, I needed, we said I needed a breakthrough. And God, and, and uh, this is uh, Jehovah. I had never in my life heard of this until I read the, this book that this beautiful lady, uh, Bridget Hilliard, wrote. She did a study on being Jehovah Bell Parazim. It's the God of breakthrough. I said, oh my God. God said, I'm still, I'm Jehovah. I don't change, but I got all these things that I operate in. So that tells me I got all these areas that I can grasp and God can change in my life. And cause he's whatever I need him to be when I need him to be it. Amen. And then he said, because, you know, sometimes when people do things to you, you be like, Lord. In my flesh, I'd be like, Lord, I'd be wanting to kick these shoes off. I'm like, Lord, you know, Latan, you, I don't know if y'all, y'all don't know this, but my family know. Growing up back in the day, I was a fighter. I just fought. I, it, it didn't have to be no reason. If my cousins was talking, I'm fighting. I'm like, my cousin done, my cousin... It didn't matter. They could be running their mouth. I done swung already and started confusion. Y'all, I done got in trouble for fighting so many times. My, I, my uncle came, broke the fight up, told me to go home. I act like I was going home. I circled back and went and jumped on the child again. He had to come back, whoop my hand all the way back home and make me stay there. Because I was, I just, I had to learn. But God said, Latanya, now that you are in me, I'm Jehovah Gamola. I fight your battles. I'm the God of recompense. I'm the God of restoration. So y'all, I fight a, I fight different now. I get on my knees now. I call out the word. I say, God, you said in your word. Your promises said to me. I start repeating God's word back to him. Amen. So that's how we build our relationship. Then when we get in God's word, we have to study. Because the devil, he keep coming. I was sharing with my husband. I said, it's like when you told me elevation, I wasn't prepared for what was to come. I said, and I felt that I, I received it, and then I just, I got beat down. And he was like, mm -hmm. I said, but I, I had to be honest. I said, I wasn't studying like I should have. I wasn't praying like I should have. I was, I said, I was just, I felt like I was just exposed. That's what I told him. God told me, he's, and I said, well, I wonder why. And he just, he, sometimes my husband don't give me an answer. He just sit there and smile and laugh. And he, that unctions me to know you need to go to the word. God took me to 2 Timothy 2.15. 
It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I had to admit some things in that scripture because God said, you need not to be ashamed. I have become ashamed to stand before people and stand to glorify God. Because it was, I'm an introvert. It was too much. It, I said, God, there's too much on me. It's too much. It's too, God said, no, it's not because I've equipped you. Stop saying you're an introvert because I've equipped you for what you, what you need for such a time as this. Amen. Amen. Then I, I remind, he reminded me, you got to study your word because you got to rightly divide the word in truth. You can't be out here saying anything to anybody, Latanya. You got to know without a shadow of a doubt that you know my word and you're speaking truth. Because if you're lying, I'm going to deal with you, but that's not going to bring me no glory. Amen. So I have to learn that I have to read God's word daily and keep building on the foundation that I know that I have. Amen. Because like I said, we grow from faith to faith and glory to glory. Amen. And your relationship with God, it has to become stronger. As you, as you learn and walk this life, y'all, we experiencing a time that, and, and I, I was, I think I was talking to one of my coworkers. We were talking about, I found out some news about another coworker. And uh, it wasn't good news. So I was like, well. Let me pray. I was like, I need to pray for that person. Add him to, to my prayer list, and I shared it with Pastor. And things are so different now. People are experiencing, our kids are experiencing different things that, like, where their next meal. I had a child come in. I keep snacks and water and different things in my office and coffee in my office so that when kids come, they, you know, some of them, they just come because they just want a snack. But I had one to come in. He never, he always come in and speak, and he never asks me for anything. So this particular morning, he was a little, like, wheezy. So his friend came in with me. He said, Miss Jordan, she said, he needs something to eat. He don't want to ask because he don't want to beg because he's embarrassed. So I was like, okay, close the door. I'm like, don't ever be embarrassed to ask me anything, but why are you embarrassed? He said, Miss Jordan, we don't have food at home. So I eat when I come to school, and I just stay hungry until I come to school the next day so that my siblings and my mom can eat. And I looked, and I'm like, my God. I said, how old are you? He said, I'm 16. I'm the oldest of my siblings. I said, well, let me tell you this. And y'all know I had to go in mama mode. I went in mama mode. I started grabbing stuff. I said, first sit down and eat this. I said, eat it slow. Let's drink some water, you know. But I said, don't you ever come to school hungry and not come to my office and ask me for anything. I said, I always tell y'all, I bring this so that, because God, I, and, and, and I didn't know why God would, was instructing me to do this. Because my husband would laugh, like, I'll go buy groceries, y'all, and half of the stuff that I've purchased is for me to take to work. <laughs> and I'm, he, he look, I'm like, well, these, my kids got to have this, and they don't like all of this. They like, this. he looking at me like, really? <laughs> but I'm glad God gave, that, gave me that because that was confirmation as to why God says you need to have this in your office. And when I tell you, God never allowed me to run out. He always supplies everything that I need so I can be there for those kids. But like I said, our relationship will have to be stronger because the news that I found out, and she wasn't telling me to spread the news. She was telling me because she said, I know you someone who can get a prayer through. And I looked at her and I was like, cause, and that's how she started. She said, I need to tell you something. And she closed my door to my office. She said, and I'm like, okay, you know, I'm like, okay, and, and me being silly, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm always being silly. I said, is this something that I need to sit down or I'm, I'm going to be excited? She said, no, I need, she said, I need Latanya Jordan, Lady J at work. She said, I don't need my coworker. She said, I need to know, I need to tell you this for, of somebody who's going to get a prayer through. So I was like, okay, Lord. I was like, and she told me, and I was like, well, okay. 
I said, we're going we gonna to trust God. I said, don't waver. We're going to trust God. So that told me I, I got to continue. I can't, like I told God, uh, uh, when the devil was whooping me up on Wednesday, I had to remind myself of my fighting days. I said, Lord, I ain't no punk. I, hey, I'm not. The one thing I knew I wouldn't. And, and trust me, if you got me that first time, I was thinking I didn't, I didn't look at you and how you swung to know when I come back, I'm going to win that fight. I, 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 that's just God. Thank God for deliverance. I thank you, Jesus, for deliverance. Then you, you got to know how to pray. The word, of, you can say a lot of words, but it can get, it can top out at the ceiling. But when you got to know how to get in that word and pray God's word back to him and get his attention, you got to position and posture your heart to get in the presence of God so that the things that are coming out of your mouth, God is, is quickening. Because mind you, we can be in a room and every last one of us are praying. But we got to trust God enough that it can be 10 million of us praying. But when I say, Lord, I need you, he going to say, hold on, wait a minute. Wait, Latanya, okay, wait a minute. I need to give her some special attention. So we got, to, we got to know how to get God's attention through our prayer life. And prayer, you just communicating with God. The word of God in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, it simply say, pray without ceasing. That means all day, every day, every 24-7, pray without ceasing. You should always have a prayer on your tongue. If it's just a thankful prayer, a grateful prayer, not even asking for anything, just saying, God, I thank you. God, I acknowledge you for being giving me direction on this day. Not to go down this street, but to go down that street, because when you got to work, you heard it was a bad car accident going down that street. Just understanding that communicating with God, that's important. That's important. Having a prayer life is important to the life of the believer. You can't be a believer and don't have a prayer life because you don't have no power. You're not con connected to the source. That's just like I can come up here, we can flip the light on, but if it's not connected to Alabama power, nothing's going to happen. We're going to still be sitting in the dark. So our prayer life that's our source of power. And I don't know about y'all. I don't want to just have power. I want that dunamis power. I want that dynamite power that when I pray, I know something is going to happen. That's how I pray. I know, God, I, I know you're going to come through. You might, it might not look like it, feel like it. I might not know when, but I know you're going to come through. Because I read, I was... Reading, I, I love watching different women of God. I love Priscilla Shire. I love uh, Sarah and Sarita Jakes. I love, Cor I, I, I love Beth Moore. I love Joyce Meyer. I love listening to women of God minister the word. Not just women, but I love listening to them. And Pris Pris Priscilla Shire put it like this. She said, prayer is knowing the moment you pray, it is done. I said, wow. I said, well, okay, God. I said, you gave me faith. He said, Latanya, all you got to do is say faith. Your faith in prayer is knowing that when you've prayed to me about it, I've already done it. I said, okay. Then this beautiful woman, she ended it with, she said, Lord, she, she went on to talk about us putting God in a box. And I didn't realize that's what I was doing with God, telling God, okay, God, by the age of 27, Alexis needs to have been and graduated from whatever college that she's attending this time. I had wrote this whole thing out before God. But when, she, when I read that, she said, stop putting God in a box. You put, putting, putting these um, perimeters on your prayer life. And I was like, oh, okay, that spoke to me. Cause that's what I was doing with my own child. I was putting, I was putting limitations on how God is, how God, how I needed the blessings to come to on, through on my timeline. But I had to remember, Alexis is, I was told at the age of six, she was a special child. She was a child that was, that already knew that she was set apart. But her, she has to come into the understanding of what God has placed in her. So in learning it, this sister said she ear all her prayers with, Lord, do it. 
or do something better. I said, my God. I said, so now I said, Lord, do it. But I'm going to take the, the, the limitations off you. I'm, I, I need you to do something better than my mind can even think or imagine. Because I know you got something much greater. Because you operate in abundance, God. So me, my abundance, and your abundance is totally different. I said, so God, I want you to exceed my abundance. Exceed my abundance and my thinking, God. Just do it. Do something better. And in this, in this month, y'all, we declare October was the month of manifestation. And I shared with the women, I was like, y'all, like I told them, I had nothing. I was like, some things that was, I was praying to be manifested, I'm still praying. But God told me, he reminded me, nothing happens in your time. It happens in my time. So God, he's, so, he's, he's such a merciful God. Because, y'all, when I tell you, I had gotten to the point where I was just feeling sorry for myself. I was questioning myself. I was sharing what uh, Sister Loretta said. Repeat to me what you said at the end of service. I said, I don't want to. I said, she said, come on, Lady Jerry. I said, I don't want to. Go back and watch it. She said, no, I want you to repeat it so it can be in the atmosphere again. And I was like, oh, she don't realize it, but she shook my spirit. I responded to her. But she shook my spirit because God said, how dare you doubt me? If I give it to you, I'm going to bring it to pass. So how dare you doubt me? And I, again, yeah, I, I, God knows my name of repentance a lot. I will, Lord, I will, I will repent and I'm going to ask God to forgive me and get back right with him. And when we are praying, we got to take the time to stop and listen. And this sister this morning, I was asking God, he, that's what he gave me, stop and listen. And he said, sometimes we have to stop talking and sit or be still and listen and know that he is God. And Sister Tasha this morning, because Pastor started laughing, he said, they all up in your message. <laughs> I said, amen, they are. Because sometimes we're so busy asking God for things. And we, we don't stop and realize that he's already trying to get the response to us. He's given us the response, but we're still too busy talking. We got our mouth going. So sometimes, and that sister read Psalms 46, and she went to verse 10. And I'm going to read it because I'm going to close with this. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. My God, my God. Who? It said, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. My God. So when in all of this, y'all, if y'all don't get anything on your faith journey, know how to pray, learn how to study God's word, and when you study and ask, stop yourself and be still your spirit. Sometimes it takes you stilling your mind. Not just being still, but just still your mind. And just say, God, I surrender to this moment. Talk to me. Uh, Yolanda Adams came, came to my mind. She said, alone in a room, it's just me and you. She said, I don't know how to pray. I don't want to disappoint you. And I'm like, oh my God, you are speaking to me. Because my, my whole, my walk, I don't want to disappoint God in this. That was my fear. Don't, I don't want to disappoint God in this. I don't want to, God, I don't want you to, I don't want to miss it. I don't want to get ahead of myself. God said, Latanya, if you just be still and humble yourself. And quicken your ear to my voice because I'm talking to you. God said, I got it. He said, I got you. So know that God got your back. Just take a moment and be still and wait for the manifestation of God. Amen.
Come on, let's give God another hand clap of praise. Wow. Yes. This is Pastor Derek Jordan, Senior Pastor of Hope Everlasting Ministry. Where the hope of the Lord is in his hymn, I pray that the message that you've heard here today at Hope Everlasting Ministry has been a blessing to you and to your family. We'd love for you to make the decision to make Hope Everlasting Ministry your church home. If you've heard this message today and you're not saved and you're ready to give your life to the Lord, I ask you to go to Romans 10, 9 and 10. Review those verses of scripture, pray and believe that Jesus Christ is indeed our Lord and Savior. Believe that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. And verse number 11 tells us that when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we will never be put to shame or embarrassed. I am proud to have had the opportunity to bring you this word on today. Please write us or let us know how Hope Everlasting Ministry has been a blessing to you and your family. God bless you and have a great day in the Lord.